All right, hi everybody. Do you ever find yourself having a hard time just washing your hands at the sink when you're in the bathroom? If you find yourself having a hard time, it may have to do with your sink handles. So welcome to Toilet Talk. We're gonna talk about that today and on this show we love to show you things that will help you live at home for a lifetime. My name is Maria Lindbergh. I'm an occupational therapist and the owner of Stay at Home Solutions and Hard Time Wiping. Today I'm so excited because we have Elizabeth Miller. She is a uh, certified caregiving consultant and the owner of Happy Healthy Caregiver uh, website, podcast by the same name, and community. So I'm gonna go ahead and get her on here. It'll work. Sometimes this takes a second, but here we go. Oh, there we go. We got it. Hi, Elizabeth. Technology works. Good. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> you sound great. You sound great. And I love your backdrop. It's very professional. Oh, thank you. It's just, yeah. <laughs> it's very bare bones here. Yep. Love filming in the bathroom and love the background there. Oh, you're literally in the bathroom. I am literally, I take toilet talk to the extreme, okay? I I live and breathe it, so. <laughs> yes, so welcome awesome. to toilet talk. This is so great to have you here. And this is I'm so gonna... creative. I love it. I love that you do a whole segments on this, and um, it does. It's important for, for, it, for people who are care recipients, for caregivers to know how we can keep our loved ones independent at home. And I know I'm gonna learn something from you as well, so. Oh yeah, I cannot, well thank you, and I, I can't wait to hear what you have to say too about um, sink handles. And I know sink handles, it's like, you know, people don't really think much about it. I know that I've been in a lot of homes that have like those acrylic knobs that are just so hard to turn off and on, especially if you have arthritis. And then in my experience as a caregiver to my grandparents and an occupational therapist, I've run into sink, some sink problems. And you're using the sink all day, right? You're going to the bathroom, you're brushing your teeth, you're washing your face. So sink handles are so important. And if you want to make a home to live in for a lifetime. I think you bring up some great points. I, ha I have to be honest, I never really thought much about our sink handles until a few people asked me to ask. And I know a <laughs> friend of mine, Rachel, has joined us. Hey, Rachel, she's she takes care of somebody who... Um, has a spinal cord injury is in, in is in a wheelchair which i know has its own challenges as well so i um we were talking last night on the way home from dinner about sink candles i have two college students uh two college age students and my husband and it just kind of spun off into this whole toilet talk conversation but <laughs> we we were talking about how we hate those acrylic candles and i have those in my master bath oh I hate them because they're they're hard to, to maneuver. They're also like hard to keep clean. And to your point, we're using our sinks more than ever. And I'm more conscious of germs than ever. Oh, yes, germs. Oh my gosh, yes. That's a whole segment in itself for sure. But yeah, you, you want things that are easy for cleaning. And so um, we can take turns. Um, would you care to go first or and talk about sink handles or I could go? Either way. Yeah, I mean, I think when, what we came to the conclusion of is we we love, we don't like acrylic and we also don't like the sink handles that you have to push down and they give you like three seconds to, I mean, to get it all together. Like half the time it might take me that long to just get to the sink. So we, we those were our tops that we disliked. We like the ones that have a sensor, uh, but but they have to last long enough and they have to work effectively. Like there's nothing more annoying than when a sensor is not working right. And where is the sensor? So I think that where we landed is our favorite is just the handle, like the, the one with the big arm where you can just knock that puppy up with your whole hand, with your whole arm. Oh yeah, that is such a good point. Yes, yes. So the uh, motion sensor handles, oh my gosh. I Sometimes I feel like a ghost because I, you know, wave, wave, wave over it and the water won't come out. So I, I totally understand. They're, they're good for, um, yeah, you were talking about your friend with spinal cord injury or if you're somebody 
who um, has uh, like some kind of movement condition, maybe even Parkinson's or something where it could, it's kind of um, easier, easier target if they're working correctly anyway. Um, I know some of them, you can adjust uh, the settings so the water runs a little bit longer or you can put the water temperature a certain way, but you do really have to get lucky. I do like those one arm levers that you're talking about. That can be really handy um, for people. Like you don't have to grip around it necessarily. You can use the palm of your hand. You can use your fist. You can use um, your wrist, forearm, elbow. So those those can make it really really good. I um, or really easy for people to use and for caregivers too. So. I, I wanted to show really quick. I like levers too. And so I'm going to show you my bathroom setup here. Um, oops, excuse me. There we oh, go. There and go. I, I'm also a huge fan of just um, in my bathroom, I've got the oil bronze look going on. So I've got two levers here. Um, I like this also in my bathroom because it's very dark. And so it contrasts against the countertop and also the wall. So it really stands out if you're helping take care of people who have macular degeneration, glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, you know, any anyone who has low vision, whatever it is, cataracts. Um, so it stands out so it's easier to see. And then you can have all kinds of grips as well, like you were pointing out, like with the one arm lever. And um, so, you, of course, you can grip onto it, turn it on and off like that. You can go like that. You can make a fist. You can... Um, if you're somebody who, sorry, I'm wiggling around a little bit, but I even have a back scratcher. People Ooh. tend to have back scratchers or um, reachers, grabbers at home. And oh my gosh, so easy. I'm doing this with my left hand, by the way. I'm not, that's not my dominant hand. So I, I really love levers for that reason because they're not only easy for you, but if you're helping caregive for somebody, it could make them do more things on their own for longer so that you have less to do. Because as caregivers, don't we always have 800 things on our list to do? Yeah, we always want less to do, less to take care of. And and it's part of their, ther I know as an occupational therapist, that it, it's part of their therapy and their exercise to move themselves longer. So I think those are all um, great you know great tips i think and i love the back scratcher idea multi-purpose <laughs> scratch your back turn on and off the faucet that's Perfect. right yeah you could do <laughs> so many um so many points so uh, i wanted to open up if anyone here has any questions or if you want to share anything please put it down below and we're happy to uh, talk about it and um i also wanted to um uh, know do you have any stories about um, um, like when you were a caregiver for, it, it was your mother, correct? Or was it both parents? Well, so my, my mother-in-law had lung cancer and my parents had chronic health conditions. Um, they're all, all three are now deceased. And, uh, and I also have an older brother with a developmental disability. So I think the hardest part, um, you know, when I'm thinking about to, to mom and all of so much toilet talk there. So many crazy stories. I don't know that any of them have to do with handles, but oh well, potty. Hey, we're being, open to it. <laughs> anything toilet related was a hot topic, particularly with my mom. She um, was obsessed with the what what a food does to her bowels, doesn't do to her bowels. When you know, I've I've gone in places where I never thought and had expected that I would need to go with my parents um, and my in law and you know, we used to just kind of make jokes even when my mom was bedridden for the last couple years. And my sister was her primary caregiver at that time. And I, um, we changed a lot of, we changed, we changed her bedding a lot. She was bedridden for the last two years and on hospice. And just even the whole idea of like rolling up the under pads and how to change her properly. My mom was a very large woman. She had a bariatric bed. And we, and, you know, the first time I did it by myself, I just felt like there should be gold stars falling from the sky because, <laughs> you know, and I would pull out the wipes and have them laid out. I had her A and D ointment. I had the, the under pad all rolled up and ready to go. And mom, you know, trying to instruct her to help herself as much as possible. And even like on the side of her bed, one of my sister's amazing tips was we had foam, those um, noodles, the, the mm -hmm. swim noodles 
on the bars of the bed because my mom used to kind of whack it in the middle of the night. Oh. But we also, this might be TMI, Maria, but we used to name, we used to name the, the bowels. Like we were going through like the hurricane. <laughs> when you start with A and you go through BC, we were naming the different bowel movements for a yeah. while. Or we would, you know, my mom could, would, would be still fascinated with them and she'd want to know what they look like. And I'd say, oh, this one's like a sweet potato or this one's a whatever. <laughs> Craziness. I know. We got to laugh or we, or we just can't even, we can't even cope with it. No, I, oh my gosh, you, you were bringing up so many great tips and I, but I love that most of all that you guys named the bowels like in the hurricane kind of stuff <laughs> because you have to laugh. Like there, I mean, your, your mom, I mean, you all never thought you would be in that situation and you just have to find like humor and lightness no matter where, where it is. And I love that. I love also that she was still you know just very that was her way of being involved was to ask about her bowel movements and what they look like and you know she she was in on the joke so I think that makes it like so beautiful and and that I think that in itself is like just the greatest tip like what you know what can you find what little joy can you find in the day where where everyone's a part of it um yeah I I understand that is backbreaking work Basically, you know, if you're, especially if you're by yourself and you're trying to help somebody clean up after they've had a bowel movement in bed or, you know, whatever, um, that, I mean, I've done that so many times and that is very tricky. And, um, that's all the more reason why I, I love doing toilet talk because I want to talk about how, what are the changes that we can make at home and, you know, or equipment or what are the techniques that can make it easier for us as caregivers? Because Everyone, I think that statistic from AARP, like one in four millennials is a caregiver. It's just, it's something that's going to grow and grow and grow as the population ages. And so I'm, I'm so glad um, you're, you're talking about, you know, this was my experience with my mother. And it's, your, it's bringing up even it. other things. Like my mom wasn't always immo immobile. So I've been, you know, went through this journey of her where first she was walking with a cane, you know, then she had a walker and then it was the wheelchair. And I live in Georgia and my mom and dad had a um, vacation home, a summer home up in Michigan. And so there were years where we would take turns trekking with mom up and up and down I-75. And I got to be, you know, and I had to learn mom's behaviors too. Like she would she would hold it too long and, you know, I'd have to constantly ask her like, mom, it's okay. I don't mind stopping. I need to stretch my legs. Like I would make it kind of about me sometimes. Yeah. And then I learned quickly that McDonald's had the best restrooms because, you know, you go to a rest stop or something. And I remember her saying to me, Elizabeth, can't you just drive up onto the sidewalk to go to that little cute, um, you know, visitor center rest, rest area? Like, no, mom, we can't drive up the sidewalk. There's benches. And if we takes us an hour to get to the bathroom, but she'd have to go. So mm -hmm. I learned that McDonald's was the best spot to park back by the restroom door. They had that one door inside. And then what yes. is it, Maria? What, why do they put the, the um, handicap accessible bathrooms always as the last one in the bathroom? <laughs> like, what the heck? Why aren't they putting that as the first bathroom? We we've just made it there in the nick of time. So, I, so crazy. I'm so frustrated by that too. They obviously didn't talk to caregivers or, you know, anyone in the therapy world, because I agree that's, that's the worst spot possible because you're trying to get in and you think about like the process that you may have to go through, just like getting in the bathroom itself, closing the stall door, um, managing the clothing and, you know, all of that. I, I, I'm baffled as well. I don't know why. I, I definitely think there's a lot of room for improvement as far as like public spaces and making things accessible and catering more to, because, you know, I'm somebody, I, I'm lucky I don't use any devices. You know, I'm not using a walker or a wheelchair or whatever to get around. And um, I'm happy to walk way in the back to go to the bathroom and let other people have access to a closer stall. And, and the same with those, um, you know, yeah, we we're talking about the sink handles and a lot of public spaces do have the motion censored sink handles. Um, but those, like you mentioned, those come with some issues on whether mm -hmm. they turn off or turn on or off, give you enough time to lather the soap and everything. 
And uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of room for improvement. I like, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you point out McDonald's. I also, I don't know, is there a Sap Brothers uh, chain in your area? It's a gas station. What's it called? Sap Brothers. No, no. They're, they're actually, they're also pretty good about having um, bathrooms that are more accessible for, for other places. So if any of you are in the area where there's Sap Brothers, I, I prefer them over some other chains. <laughs> Yeah, I thought the people who are designing these buildings, like, if we will just do free marketing for you on if your bathrooms are <laughs> handicapped accessible, because it yes. matters. It matters a lot. Yes, I'm on board with that. I'm, I'm happy to promote people who, who are doing it right. So <laughs> absolutely. Well, and um, let's not even go into the airplanes. I'm getting ready to travel tomorrow. I'm like, there's no way that I would ever be able to use the, the bathroom with my mo mom. I mean, she, there's no way, like, I'm glad I never had to experience that. That, that just sounds like a complete nightmare in itself. I don't even like using airplane restrooms. They are so tiny, barely one person can fit in there. And there's definitely hardly any accessible features in those airlines. So yeah, anyone knows if of a more accessible, friendly airline, please put in the comments below or yeah. <laughs> let me know Agreed. because I, I wish I could recommend a good airline too. Yeah, that would be awesome. Well, where, where can people find you? What's, what's going on in your world? Um, so I mean, I'm, I'm a new entrepreneur full time. I've been working in this happy, healthy caregiver business for, I know it's very exciting, um, since May and it's been awesome because I've had time to just be with my family who's needed me. Um, I'm getting ready to go on a trip to Wyoming to be trained as a, as a retreat leader for caregiver respite, um, events through No Barriers USA. So we're going out to Yellowstone, which is going to be amazing. I just wouldn't have had these opportunities if I wasn't a a full-time entrepreneur and my my 100 percent jam passion is to um, fast track family caregivers to resources support and information that's going to help them i essentially have been creating what i wish existed for me so that's that i want to affirm and i want to let caregivers know that they're not alone i want to put the resources in front of them um, you know, hopefully through my podcast and through the blog articles. And then from a monetization standpoint, I work with employers and I work with corporate um, corporations uh, and people who have products and services that are trying to reach caregivers. And so one of those that related to toilet talk would be depend as a partner, um, a care partner of mine. Yeah, and they <laughs> have a special um, that I just posted about on my Instagram feed about the depend uh, night nighttime under pads that there's a deal for Costco members um, that use the Ibotta app that you can save money. And I'm always about saving money because caregiving is expensive. And, and you know what, like, I used to think like the kids had a lot of plastic and were expensive when you're raising your children. But when you start needing more help with toileting and other things that gets expensive. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, just all all the gear. And I know like Medicare um, and I don't know. I don't want to say some private insurance because it just varies from plan to plan, but some can help with the cost for those things. But it's very frustrating when um, you you don't really have a lot of options. And so it's it's nice if, if people can start like setting, you know, thinking about their homes, what's going to be good for the long term? What can I do uh, to save money and help myself no matter if I'm injured or if it's illness or whatever the case is, how can I set my home up now whenever I do a renovation or whenever I move somewhere, what can I look for so that I'm not having to spend so much money on mm -hmm. like uh, medical equipment, like a commode or, um, you know, just, just those kinds of things. And especially you're bringing up depends. Um, oh my goodness. Urinary incontinence is real and bowel incontinence is real. And that does, I, I mean, I experienced it with my own grandparents and it, it just changed, like my grandmother's world, it changed. She didn't want to go out anywhere or do mm -hmm. anything uh, it, because she was concerned about having an accident. And it, it can be so um, challenging for people. I'll, I'll stop rambling anyway. But it, it yeah. is nice to have those, those ways you can save costs for these potential problems in the future too. Yeah. yeah, even even, you know, those of us that aren't 80 years old, um, 
you know, I had two kids, my bladder's not what it used to be. So um, I even have tucked some things into my duffel bag for this trip because I am going to Wyoming. I'm going to be riding a horse for like 14 miles. I have no idea if my, how my bladder's going to react to that. So I'm ready for anything. I've got my, um, you know, the Depend silhouettes. They've, they've allowed me to try different products. Um, and then my mom, we should have had stock and poise pads. My mom, would, <laughs> would, she would wear the disposable underwear and she would still line it with poise pads. Um, and she loved like the oversized washcloths. I mean, just hunting sometimes for those perfect products that she liked because she, you know, we wanted to protect her dignity as well. Um, and she was obsessed with being, being and smelling clean. Um, it was very important to her. So. Oh, a thousand percent. And, and, you know, important to them, but also important to us, you know, obviously with um, your urinary incontinence, we're all kind of like, you know, um, self-conscious about it. And I completely forgot. I'm going to have to do a toilet talk on urinary incontinence. There is um, a pelvic floor. I believe she's a physical therapist. And mm. she does all kinds of stuff on um, strengthening your pelvic floor so that you have less urinary incontinence. You know, obviously the goal is always to get to zero. But she she works on that. And the pelvic floor just... Um, and for me, Whenever I'm you talk about it, I'm, do, I'm literally doing cables. Like, I can't... <laughs> It's you can't say strength and pelvic floor and not do it. It's just that's um, right. But, yeah. but it is. Yeah, you know, it's like, I guess what what I would consider having is stress incontinence. It's just certain situations. But there are there's all kinds of different different incontinence. Um, my father in law was just yeah. here having a biopsy for um, he has um, prostate cancer, not severe, but has um, prostate cancer and was getting a biopsy to, to, to check on things. And you know, his big worry is if he needed to get radiation is that he would um, have, uh, what do they call it, like bowel incontinence. Mm -hmm. And and then we have this great conversation in a lot of way about, well, your quality of life and like what's important to you. You know, do you want, would you want to have radiation if you were going to have bowel incontinence? And they love to go places. They love to go out to eat. They love to travel. And I just, I hope people aren't ha afraid to have those. I call them courageous conversations with their loved ones because I think it's important to not have, I don't, I know for me, Maria, I don't want to be limited by the, I, I got places I want to go and I want to visit. So um, I'm going to need to figure out how to just keep this system working so that I can go to all these places on my bucket list. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like, I mean, your depends is one of the tools that's going to help make sure you're good to go. And, and yeah, horseback riding. Oh man, I don't even know. I've <laughs> that may just, I'll let you know around for sure. Yeah. 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 You're going to have to let me know how that works for sure. But, uh, yeah, that is so what, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to have to do toilet talk on urinary incontinence for sure. Um, these are hard conversations. They are. So, um, anyway, was there anything else that you wanted to add before we wrap up toilet talk for today? No, I think, you know, I, I hope that we help somebody with some tips and if they want to hear more, um, yeah, just, just stay in touch through, just go to the Instagram profile. They can stay in touch that way, but this has been fun. Definitely one of the most fun, uh, Instagram live topics for sure. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, being brave and courageous coming on talking about your experiences too. So you can find more toilet talk episodes on my Instagram handle at hard time wiping. Um, it's uh, under IGTV. And of course, I'm on most Tuesdays at 12 Central Central Standard Time on IG Live. You can find Elizabeth Miller at happy healthy caregiver. Um, so thank you so much. Oh, and if anyone, if you have a hard time wiping or know someone who has a hard time wiping, please go to hardtimewiping.com where I have my course that talks about toilet techniques and four different options to clean up easier after going to the bathroom. Thank you guys so much for coming and thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Maria. Have a great day. You too. Take care.